April 29th and 30th, St. John's Congregational Church in Springfield will host a unique event. It's titled Ashes to Ashes, and it will be a time to remember the thousands of African Americans lynched during the years of Jim Crow, as well as the untold numbers who died in the slave trade. Dr. Shirley Jackson Whitaker of Amherst is organizing these special days, and she came in to tell us more. When I look back, I, I, the thing that tilt me to doing it was when a report came out from the Equal Justice Initiative, and they had quantitated and documented close to 4,000 people that was lynched. Mm -hmm. And I know that if they say they quantitated four, you got to multiply far more, because mm -hmm. I just don't believe that the, the terrorists, uh, the Klan, gave more than a report on how many people they had lynched over the week weekend. And so... Yeah, they weren't real good on keeping records. Oh, yeah, and yeah they kept a lot of records. Yeah. So, and so <clears throat> I realized that I always felt pain for them. I, I look, I'm an artist, and I went in my basement and I realized that I had done a collage in 2008, and I put the names of people who had been lynched on there, and I said, speak their name. And I would go by there and I would speak their name. It's an African proverb that says, speak my name and I will live forever. Mm -hmm. And so I realized that it had been on my mind for a long time. And so last, after that report came out, I just said, I need to do something for them. I want to do something. I can at least give them a prayer. I can't bring them back, but I can say a prayer for them. And in the South, when we have funerals, and I'm from deep, I'm in from Georgia, deep South. And when we have funerals, the, I remember the last thing that the, that um, the minister would say: "Ashes to ashes, dust to dust." And I realized that a lot of them never got the ashes to ashes. And so I said, I will give them the ashes to ashes. And when I first started, I said, I think I have it in my backyard. I never told my husband about that. And then someone said, well, maybe we can find a church. And I found that there was some church that was very receptive to the idea because they thought it was a good idea. And someone said, what about St. John? And I liked the idea of St. John because that was John Brown was historic noted. Historic church here. In it's Saint a very Jesus. historic church. Mm -hmm. And the history, mm -hmm. as far as African Americans are concerned, is extensive. John Brown, Frederick Douglass, a part of the Underground Railroad. And I understand it's been there since 1911, where it, you know, place where it is now in Hancock and Union. But that before then, it was um, called the Free Church, where the mm -hmm. free slaves came. So it's been there a long time, and I felt this would be the appropriate place to say ashes to ashes and give them a prayer. You say, say the names. That literally is going to be a part of the event for people who come to get a name of, of a lynching. Uh, explain that. It's going in two ways. Um, the, the first night is called uh, Awakening and Illumination, and we will speak names. Because there's an African proverb that says, you speak my name, and I live forever. And um, I just felt that that's the least we can do. Say their name, and maybe say a prayer, or light a candle for them. So we'll be doing all three. Uh, when people, we have an, um, a funeral procession, and we ha will have people standing on the sides with the names of people who were lynched. And as the hearse come by, we have a cortege, you know, with the glass hearse mm -hmm. and a casket made by students here in Springfield, pulled by two black draft horses. And they will, when, they, when they're near um, the hearse, they will start speaking the names of people who were lynched. To involve the young people of the community, and you just touched on it, students at Putnam Vocational Technical Academy have constructed uh, a casket, a coffin, right. and a candelabra that's going to be used at the funeral. And that is is that Sunday evening, the actual funeral, or the funeral is talk going, about that? The funeral is going to be Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. It's going to start with a procession so that um, I always wanted them to be in a grand way brought to the, um, the church. So the students at Putnam did an excellent job under the leadership of Mr. Stephen, um, what's his name, uh, David Stephen, they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're the carpenter there, mm -hmm. and they made a casket that will be there. And they put the names of close to 2,000 people, close to 3,000, inside of the casket. Mm -hmm. And um, so that will be part of the whole 
procession and the candelabras, which would be a part of the Awakening Illumination Night. So that, I felt, was a key part. I wanted a casket for them. And so yeah. it's a funeral. So with a funeral, you need a casket. Am I right that you have a speaker coming, gentleman who lives now in Connecticut, grew up in the South, escaped, sur survived, and attempted lynching back in the 60s. Is that yeah, right? 1965. His name was uh, Mr. Winfred Rembrandt, R-E-M-B-R-T, Rembrandt. And he was from near where I grew up, in South Georgia. And I was able to meet him. He's, he's coming. If it's health, he's 71 years old, and he's gone through so much. Um, so I've t I spent a whole day with him two weeks ago. And it's amazing what this man endured. He was in the process of being lynched. They had a knife, and they was cutting him. And they was getting ready, and someone said, let's make an example out of him. So that saved his life. But there aren't many people around to talk about the process of being lynched, and in different places what they did in the process of lynching you. And he would tell you that they did certain things, and they burn you and all this. So it was, it was a whole ordeal that he went through and grateful that he did not, they were not successful and he will be here. It's, it's an amazing undertaking. I agree with you, it's amazing. No one's thought of it in the hundreds of years, but good it's happening now and I'm so proud we're doing it here in Springfield. So am I. Ashes to Ashes, April 29th and 30th at Old St. John's. Yes. Thanks for coming in. Well, thanks for inviting me, I really enjoyed it.